People may be surprised by the second movement, which you've described as stormy, because first of all, it's the leading section of the orchestra is the percussion. Yeah. It really is a percussion piece with sort of outbursts by the orchestra. That's right. During my, my lifetime, or during my composing time, the idea of percussion has, has, has changed. It is no longer thought of as something that helps it. The rest of the orchestra emphasizes things for the rest of the orchestra, as in the score of Ravel, for many scores of Ravel, although the early Spaniel does start with something with clocks ticking, which is a which is the beginning of some of the ideas I've had in music. <laughs> but but the the great the great the great thing is that we began. Varese was really the person that started to draw attention to the fact that the percussion could have an individual life and add something to the, to the rest of the, to the to the other to the orchestra and to whatever else was playing in a very special way. So that I started, I worked on a percussion piece with percussion, my double concerto, which had four percussion players, uh, and then. Uh, and I, each one of them had many different instruments, and they did all kinds of different things. And then I finally wrote a, the concerto for orchestra that had eight percussion players. And since that time, I've shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> There's also in Lear uh, something I think is a little bit unusual for you, some actual text painting. Because when you get to the word fury, then the orchestra goes a little crazy. That's not the, that's not your usual method, though. I don't quite agree with that. Uh -huh. Certainly, that opera of mine, the, the "What Next," I was very concerned about having the music reflect what the what the singers were singing about and, and their situation, and to individualize each singer, uh, and at the same time to do it now. At the same time, to emphasize also the actions that the singers were taking, so that, in fact, what bothers me a great deal about some operas that I've recently heard is that the, the, that the music is fine, just goes along, and it doesn't matter what goes on on the <laughs> stage. And I find that bothersome, and so so I've tried actually to bring out, especially. A, in recent years, and I think I've always done this actually, when I've written things after all the Robert Frost songs, point uh, maybe characterize the different, the different, uh, different poems, according to their own to, to what this what the text says. I don't think you're quite. I don't think I agree with that. I, I think I. If you have fury, you're going to have a fury Carter fury too. <laughs> Elliot, as we're speaking, we've just uh, had at the Tanglewood uh, Music Center and uh, with the Boston Symphony, 47 works of Elliot Carter lasting about 20 hours, according to what I read in the newspaper. This is a genuine popularity. Were you prepared for this? It's pretty hard for me to get accustomed to so much <laughs> all, all in a row. For one thing you didn't say, though, it was not the Boston Symphony. The large, uh, of all of, there were 10 concerts, and only one concert where the last one was played by the Boston Symphony. All the rest were played by fellows or students of Tanglewood, and they were fantastic. I know. I mean, they were yeah, unbelievably uh, quick and very agile and very understanding of the music. It's a, it's it's a lot to take. It was a lot for me to, to to hear, and it was a little. As I say, it's become very difficult for me to become accustomed to this event. <laughs> it's so unlike anything else in my life that has happened. I mean, I'm accustomed to sort of getting in a plane and going to some remote place to hear one little piece. Now, now suddenly, bang! All this stuff. I looked on the internet uh, yesterday, just before we spoke, and found a website maintained by Boozy and Hawks, probably, 
and it listed something like 230 performances over the next eight or nine months worldwide. And uh, you may have to get used to this. This, this, is real, <laughs> this is a real phenomenon. I don't think I ever will. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it was not, I mean, it was so much, so much of my life was spent uh, having uh, not terribly, uh, certainly a good half of my early life, all of my early life, was, was going to hear performances of pieces not very well played and coming away wondering whether I had made a mistake that I should have somehow fixed it up so it sound would sound better. And then I found that when I fixed it up, it sounded worse, so I <laughs> went back to the beginning. But in every case, it was partly because the performers, which is perfectly understandable, the, the, the style was something very difficult for them to grasp, and they were doing their best to play it as well as they could, but they didn't see what the character of it and what the meaning of all of this was. Now this has all changed. Uh, and it's largely a result of the existence of the, the very pieces we're talking about. Apparently, this at Tanglewood was the first time that the Boston Symphony itself played in the Contemporary Festival, and it's the first time yes. they ever played a concert by, uh, uh, of all works by a single living composer. Yes, I, I'm not sure it's a good idea, but I like this. <laughs> <laughs> and pieces like the Concerto for Orchestra, which are difficult, and which are played in this country fairly rarely because uh, orchest American orchestras can't afford that much rehearsal time. Exactly. Well, of course, the thing is that these were fellows and they, were, they could afford rehearsal time because they weren't being paid for, yes. for rehearsal time. They were paying, on the contrary, they were paying to learn how to do this. But I suppose uh, even with reduced rehearsal time, American orchestras have gotten better and better. And they, they must be quicker and quicker at getting these things. Yeah, but you, you do have, I do have this problem. When James Levine did my big 40-minute uh, symphony in, in Boston, he had the first movement done in one year, and they spent a lot of time learning that, and then the second year he did the entire thing so that they already knew one piece of it well enough so they wouldn't take and now it was done in Tanglewood, and it was by the same people that had already played it in Boston. So they took even less rehearsal. But this is very, very rare. One of the biggest problems, of course, is that contemporary music usually has a one-time show because the reason that that is being played by them or or performed in one way or another, is that they want they they feel that the public and the press will be interested in a premiere and they will come and cover it. The second time around is not so much interest in, the, in it, and it certainly isn't a premiere. So that very 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 often pieces have had their one performance and then just dropped, which is a disaster because I I, th I think that American music has produced quite a large number of really very remarkable pieces, including some of yours. Well, I don't know, but, but in general I agree with you. <laughs>